So today we're going to be working on the pointy end. So what we're going to do is take up the deck today, hopefully taking the windlass off, we've got to relocate some lines and then fingers crossed we're going to start putting some new wood in. What do you think? Tall order? It's a bit windy and cold out there but I'm sure we can do it. So first we need to take all these sheets off and try and remember what's underneath. Can't remember, about two years ago. I think we've had sort of living under our sheets so we've just pulled them back and there's loads of dead eaten crabs so obviously crabs aren't really climbing onto the boats and killing themselves and eating themselves so must be some funky little bird that um, that lived there. But I've never ever seen or oh, how it's even got in. So that's a strange one. So we're removing the windlass. So we need to get the line off around it. And while we're there, we're gonna reroute because at the moment it goes down through the horse pipe. We're gonna just bring it up over the deck so nothing's in our way when we're working in this area. But I've got to try and untie them off that, that we did two years ago and it's like Spaghetti Junction. Nothing is ever a five minute job, so check back in six minutes. You know that expression you've always used? If you can't tie knots, tie lots. Yeah. It's not great when you come and undo it. <laughs> What a beautiful day. I've just been sat here like that. Wow, brilliant. Right, so how do you get these off? Never took one off in my life. Looks, looks pretty good to be honest with you. Yeah? I mean, I'm not, I usually pull anchors up by hand because I'm usually got a small boat. I have put power to this in the past and it ran forwards and backwards. So I left it at that because we had the, the line tied round it at the time. So it moved. Much wasn't back, so we could obviously get this off and we can take it back to the workshop and mint it hopefully. Because I can imagine that's quite an expensive piece of kit. But back to how do you get it off? <laughs> <laughs> so I can see some fixings here. So I'm guessing all this, I think these are called the gypsies or something like that. So I think we'll try and pull the top off. We'll find a nice place to put all the parts to keep them together. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll find out how to remove it. Yeah, it's coming. What make is it? Mur. Mur? Mur. M U I R. Is that a good winch? Good windlass, sorry? Sure. Rather chunky. Right, put that on you then. Put it back in my hole. So we've just been removing these two bolts here. This is basically like a bit of a deflect, I'm going to call it. So when the chain is being released, it can't push back and then go into a knot. I think if it goes into a knot, that'd be a problem, wouldn't it? So vice versa. That's a bit homemade, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just got a bit of a bit of old hose yeah, around it. See where it's been like wearing on it and stuff. I'm actually quite excited to take all this back to the workshop, you know, and rebuild it and take all the seals out and clean it all. Find the seals and yeah. Hopefully. There's not much to go wrong, is it? It's a big gearbox. Pull up on it. That'll come off easier than I thought. What's it? 3,000, whatever that means. Right, so I'm in the locker of doom. Got a gemmer up top, just clean all this, this slots out on the screws. 
So I'm guessing all we have to do is remove these big bolts here and then the stub that the gypsy is attached to whatever, will come down and I wonder how heavy this is? Can't be that heavy, can it? So I'm going to start on this starboard forward. Okay, well let's try try the port forward. Okay, so we don't need a bigger screwdriver in the slots. Ports forward. Yes, we're gone, we're gone. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right. So, them bolts there, they're not going to stop this coming down now, they're going to stop the rotation. So, there's obviously still something else up top, which is holding all this together. So, what we need to do now is go back up top. Um, but I think while I'm in here, we're going to whiz these bolts out here. That's the little chain tubey thingy. So the ones we're just taking the small nuts off there is these ones here, so we can either give it a knock and it should come out or we'll try and undo these. So the loose there. So yeah, we've we've obviously moved these big bolts. I was thinking that would release it, then it would fall back through. Maybe it does, maybe it's just stuck. We didn't really want to force, I don't want to damage any part of this. So I think another idea is maybe there's this big bolt here and then it sort of comes off the shaft. Pretty doubtful, but I'm sure there's plenty of people going, ah, I do like this, but we don't know. So I've never, I've never taken one of these apart before, so just to keep taking it apart. Um, it's gonna be completely stripped anyway and cleaned up, made beautiful. So yeah, we'll start with that one and see what happens. Okay, so that has revealed a shaft. So that nut, all that nut was doing, or the nut and washer was stopping this from falling down, so... Might just come off there, I don't know. Or do you reckon we have to undo all of these here? Then that, the whole gearbox then, will come down. We'll undo them anyway. We'll undo these anyway. Yeah. Right, so obviously we want it to come off, but we, what we don't want it to do is fall off. Because imagine this is quite a lump. So I'm just going to cable tie around this lovely little tension wire which I put in. So just leave it there so it just fall. Hopefully it's not going to get right into the little wedgy part of the bilge. It's still not coming off though, is it? So obviously this isn't going up. Huh? It's not going up, is it? No. 
the one I've just done now, I've just undone these bolts around there. It's away, it's away, it's away, hold on. Right, cable tie stuck now. <laughs> you give me some. The cable ties working against us now, but I think if it wasn't there, it would have just fell, wouldn't it? The Gemma's off to try and find some cutters. Problem is, they're working right above us on the top. We've got all our tools up there, and it's quite, it's quite a long way to go. Can you see that? Uh, no. Okay, so right, yeah. Quite a lump. Use with a lumber. Oh god, it's full grease. Okay. okay, so we know how to ah there's bolts under here, Gemma. Ah. Okay, so that's why we couldn't separate the top from the bottom. There's some Allen bolts under here. So you've got the rail of Allen keys. Can you tell I've already pre-slacking them? Yeah, you get the greasy end of that. Oops. Now I'll pass it to the non-greasy end this time. I'll give this a little knock, then what's gonna happen? Piece of wood come with it. She's a beauty. There you go. Um, so I'm just going to get a few lot of knocks now, just try and loosen it. So I don't want to hit it too hard because it's like a mason surface in it. Right, so there we'll go upstairs and give it a lever. Hopefully, that whole ring should come off. And as usual, as soon as we come and work outside, it's just started raining. Yeah. Did it? So what I've seen from the from the wind trips tonight looks really, really good. Very high quality build, so hopefully it'll come back to life. Oh look at the colour of the deck used to be. I bet she was a beauty, wasn't she, when she was um in the eighties, what do you think? So here's the, the windlass in its um, disassembled form. Oh, I think, I think you have to disassemble it this much anyway to get it in and out, but I, I'm quite impressed with it. I think it was quite a beast. Um, we're going to do some research on them. Um, and then we'll take it back to the workshop and we'll completely strip it, clean it all up, paint it so it's like like brand new. Um, ho hopefully it'll serve the, serve the boat good in the future, won't it? From Australia. It's from Australia. One fun to the postage on that. <laughs> oh yeah, the date. 1986. 86, it, eh? This winch is the same age as me. <laughs> Hold on. It's gonna be broken though. <laughs> um, I am two months older than this winch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's really, it's like a, a vintage yeah, <laughs> piece now. We definitely need to off hire it then, don't we? <laughs> hmm. What do you reckon? Is it saveable? Or do we need to spend four grand on a new one? That'll clean off that. We, we like to fix stuff, don't we? That'll clean off. I like me winches like I like me women. I'm born in 1986. Yeah, I'm broken. <laughs> You're cruising. All of this boat work is really hard work and it's also really expensive. So when we get sponsors on board, it helps so much with the project. And today's project is going to be sponsored by Husk. Husk make some awesome knives. I like sharp things. Should we have a look? 
Husk knives are made from high quality Japanese inspired stainless steel. The knife features a hygienic rustic handle and a 38 degree blade edge that ensures extreme sharpness. Husk knives comes out the box razor sharp and will stay that way for years. Currently, for all my viewers, Husk is running a 70% discount on all their authentic Japanese inspired knives. You can test the Husk knives risk free with a 30 day money back guarantee. The deal won't last long, so make sure to check it out by clicking the special link in my video description. I've found this knife to be really, really sharp, cuts through almost anything. It's really comfortable as well to hold in your hand, so I've really enjoyed using it. That went through that coat can like a hot knife through butter. Husk are running a 70% discount at the moment for our viewers. So you can try these out as well, risk free, 30 day money back guarantee. The deal won't last long, so check it out now. I'll drop a link in the description. Thank you so much to Husk for sponsoring today's episode. So what we want to do is get this plate up here because basically we want to be working underneath this area. But this plate has got this big line going through it. That's quite, that's quite a big part of our security system, this of, of the boat not moving. So we need to be able to relocate this line back over the hole here and back to that cleat. So it's a big heavy line. So we're going to try and like drag it out now, hook it with the boat hook and hopefully we don't have to go down on the mud, but if we have to, we have to. Why does it always rain when we work outside? Yeah, oh, the light there. Huh? <laughs> all right, let's watch all these spiky screws. Yeah. Okay, so now we've removed the big plywood temporary piece on. So now we need to try and get this bad boy off. But the hose pipe, so that's where the anchor chain comes up and then hangs down the bottom. Now this is actually welded to the stainless. So we've got mild steel welded to stainless steel here. And then it goes through, all the way through there and then comes out here. But it's not actually welded on here. So I'm kind of hoping that once we remove the top part, we'll be able to give that a good knock around around the um, where the anchor sits. Hopefully we can get it out in one rather than having to cut the tube. Even though the tube will be changed at some point, because I think it'd be a much, much better job in stainless, wouldn't it? But it'd be nice to get it off and then get it back to the workshop. I'm trying to save you, go on. So I've realised we can use, I've been like hitting upwards, it's hard work when it's all bouncing. I realise I can use the palm nailer with a punch on it. So that just like rattles them out really quick. Go. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, I've come through. You've come through. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we definitely need a new pipe. <laughs> Yes. 
It's only about eight foot long. <laughs> Come back in ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Careful in case that pings out there quick and you fly backwards and go, woo! Spur lash. Spur lash. What a nice day it's turned out to be now. It's nearly one hoodie weather. <laughs> Still got two on at the moment, but it's nearly one hoodie weather. You'd think so for bleeding May, wouldn't you? Yeah, we're winning. We're winning. It was weird then though, because some were yeah. really small. Yeah, because the long ones go through the deck beam. Ah, um, some really long ones. Well, that's weird, isn't it? Well, they've grown the thread off halfway. They're all like that. Look, they're all ground off. Hold on a minute. The welded. I was going to say they welded. <laughs> okay, so we haven't saved the fixings. I will not reuse these fixings. They were obviously bought the bolts and then gone, they're not long enough, them, Jack. What are we going to do? I know, Dave's got a tick, we'll, um, we'll, weld, we'll, we'll extend them. That's what you have to do when you're in the field, isn't it, sometimes? But we know now, so we need to get some super duper long ones of them stainless steel. Unless they're 20 quid each, then we'll reuse them. So yeah, look, they're all like that. Oh, is this just going to come off now? <laughs> is it going to come off? <laughs> I took your hammer, didn't I? You took my hammer and you didn't return it and it's all the way down there. Can we reach it? No, I'll put it all in there. I can see it! It's all the way down there. I'm such a good wife, I will go and get it for you. Well, but gonna... next time, return me tools. Right, so I've just been hitting this off here because obviously this wasn't actually attached to this plate. So we're now giving it all a hit, make sure it's all gonna come out and so technically now it can go straight up. Right, so we're sort of scrapping to get this plate off, but good news, it's actually moved on the whole down there so we sort of know that's not that's not holding us so i think it's holding where it goes through the deck so we'll give it another good i mean we're not really that fond of the deck the deck's coming off anyway so technically what we should have done is just cut right around it but nice to get out wouldn't it no he says that <laughs> go and get me a uh, multi-tool and me nasty angry grinder and just cut it off it's a bit of a pain in the arse this Dodgy. And dodgy, dodgy working on this pointy end. Right, so that one's right through there. That one's sort of in there. Let's try and get more. So we've got like a bit of a deck beam we can leave off there. Right? The plate's not moving, the deck is just pushing away. <laughs> You did it! Okay. Well, I was just going around to like help, but I'm not leaving. Yeah. One hole. 
hose pipe. Well, Bones is one hole down. <laughs> so I'm sort of Googling how to do this and I Googled hose pipe. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Required lots of lubrication anyway. Right up. <laughs> More holes in the boat. Hmm. That's gonna have to be patched up down there. What? Because otherwise we're gonna have loads of birds <laughs> come in and start nesting in the oh. chain locker. Better than holes. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> birds are better than holes. <laughs> right, so what we're gonna do now is make our temporary patch. Because we want to be able to open up the anchor locker as much as we possibly can, but we haven't got much wood. So we're going to make a temporary patch, then we can mark it on the floor, then we know where we can cut the original deck back to give us access down to do the work on the frames and the beam shelf. So Gemma had a plan, and I'm going to pretend, it, pretend it's my plan. So what we're going to do is, if you remember very, very early on, People who've been watching us from the start will remember we're going to use an adjustable washer, which is a hinge. So the plan is... But we're going to use it for its intended purpose. Oh, yeah. this hinge, it's not an adjustable washer, no. it's a hinge. So we're going to be screwing a piece of 18mm marine ply. Don't know why we're using marine ply, it's only because that's all we've got. So then we're going to be putting a hinge surface mount on the top. Technically, we'll be able to fold the whole thing over and then it'll sit flat and then we can work and then when we want to go home in a rush we can just fold it over because it takes us so long to resheet every time we basically do work on the frames or on the hull it takes so long so we're trying to sort of speed up our days by taking a bit of time now so yeah this is going to be fixed to the fixed to the um the deck it's going to be on there that's going to be on there it's going to make a hinge and it'll be pre-sheeted over. Pre-sheeted. So you don't have to even pull the sheet back, you can literally no. lift even, this over. We could even put some bungee cords down or some, I don't know, some of that like that. Yeah. Anyway, Ikea, don't nick this idea, please. <laughs> right, so we put our variable washers on. Oh, quick, close it. Look at the saver. Yeah, close it. It looks better. Yeah. Closed. So what we do now is I'm going to go onto the mud. I'm going to draw a line around it at the edge of the hull, and then um, yeah, and then we can cut it off. Bit of reach. <laughs> did you do super long sharpies. <laughs> I can't actually reach, I should have done it from the top. Come on then, I'll do it for you. Yeah, I'll film you. <laughs> film me fall? Yeah, well. I'm going to lie down because then I won't fall off as easy. Where am I? Yeah, this guy, I've got about 50 mil up, but... I'll do it. Yeah, good line, man. Go on. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing, <laughs> I'm just sort of... I'll do it, go on. And then we'll go plus, plus a bit on that. Yeah, so we'll have some overhangs yeah, in the water. Yeah, yeah. Can... No, that's. Uh, Am I done? Just do, just do the middle bit there where you're not done. Yeah. <laughs> that good? Do you reckon I could write my name up without looking? Right, the camera can't actually see, but she's done a shit job. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, then I'll fix that in a minute. Hang on. That line is um, special, isn't it? <laughs> so obviously we've got a big hole in the hull where we've just took out the horse pipe. The water is never going to come up that high, so we haven't got to worry about that for now. But we get a lot of birds around here, and a lot of birds that like to nest inside boats. So 
thought temporarily if I got like a balloon and blew it up just to stop anything being able to come in but then there's another problem we don't have balloons on the boat but was a rubber glove work? let's see But obviously the hole itself is very rough. So what we're gonna do is wrap it in a paper in a in a lovely kitchen towel. Just so we don't burst it. There we go. How long will that last? It's only literally until like I can find something a bit more permanent. I'll do, won't I? So we've now got our hinge deck, quite ingenious. You're going to see every boat with these in the future. You saw it here first. Right, so primary objective of today was to sort of get rid of all the rot, basically, all the rotten deck and stuff like that. Now we can do that. So I think we've basically got to chop as much of this out as we can now. Then we can properly inspect it and then we can start doing, doing the repairs then, can't we? inside my boat. <gasps> Mr. Robbins. Fine. Maybe we should have moved all the tools and stuff first. Yeah. One of them would have, should have, could have. You know I mean? Where did you get your t-shirt from? Shirt box. <sighs> they do like properly crazy mad t-shirts and basically like that sort of thing. So. And if you use the code SHIP HAPPENS 2002, you get 10% off. If you like that t shirts. That was a good one, that one. I know, yeah. strong in the places you don't want it to be, yeah. isn't it? So the actual deck beam itself ah. was okay. It was just broken.
instead of bringing the hoover all the way up, not I just put it in here. As you do. We have a storm coming in. Right, so we made some progress, I think. So we removed all the deck, we removed the windlass, we removed all the little hose pipes, we removed the big hose pipe. Um, so we revealed quite a bit of rock, which we knew that was there. So, this, I'm sure it's called a knee. Is it called a knee? I'm not too sure. So it's basically got one big bronze bolt all the way through, through the inner stem and the outer stem. The inner stem's poorly. Look at it, thunder. Yeah. Thunder. <laughs> So the inner stem's poorly, but my initial idea anyway was, because we we're going to be reinstating the bulwarks, was to extend the inner stem so we've got something for the bulwarks to attach to. So we can come quite a bit further down there. Further down there, we can join this, because it's actually quite good here, it's just the very, very top of it. So then we can extend that out, it keeps the angle of the, um, of the stem, uh, and then all the new bulwarks can come to it. To it. This here, this, this knee is quite poorly. It's had fixings in it in the past, but there's the fixings shoot right that way, but they don't go into the beam shelf, which I'm quite... I don't know, it's a bit weird, huh? it's, a bit, it's a bit rusty anyway, so I think we could make a new one of them quite happily, that's not a problem. So, go more towards the port side. So starboard. The starboard side? Yeah, you know. Two years, but we're still there. <laughs> <laughs> You're confused, don't you? So we knew that this frame was poorly, it's had a repair at some point, but we will we will replace these frames. That's, I'm actually that's quite an easy job. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, um, so the, the original frames haven't got any tops yeah. and they're just the sisters that we spoke about that were short yeah, down. Yeah, so I think I think we'll do a nice repair on that because we're not gonna get many chances of that, are we? And then once we've done that, then we'll start doing the beam shelf. I'm not too sure whether to do a very short section of the beam shelf first, just to get all this pointy end done, and then we've got free run then down down both sides, haven't we? Rather than trying to do all that. Uh, right but then. yeah, yeah, it's going, it's good, it's good. Right before this. Oh, it is fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, before this storm comes, we better close over yeah. and uh, and get to it. But. Oh, I've just felt the first spot, spot yeah, of rain. <laughs> but we're really lucky how yeah. quick and easy it is to. Uh, so she's she's up. off. Go on, judge your pattern, do we? Why does it always thunder on our episodes lately? <laughs> so it's got a nice, handy little bungee cord on there. So you can go check that out. And then, in a quick emergency, we can hook it down there. And then we'll put a load of batteries on it and put, I've actually got a nice spot underneath where I can get a fixing from underneath, so bonus. That was quick, wasn't it? Yeah. So when we are working outside and the weather just all of a sudden buckets down on us, we can just literally close it over and, uh, and we're watertight again. So, so it was definitely worth spending the extra little time today doing that because literally it's like done in a minute. Simon's putting some more weight on it. And we have got special fixing inside to secure that so no one can open it. But obviously we're not gonna show you that on camera. <laughs> right, thanks for all. Thank you all for watching. See you next week. Big shout out to all our patrons and supporters. This project wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you so much. See you all next week.